we're going to take a look at what you need to get set up to be able to create uh, an app out of InDesign, essentially using DPS or Digital Publishing Suite. So I've got this PDF you can open, and I've put it in full screen mode to get fancy, but it's a listing of things that we need. You'll see that there is a, a white area up here and then the yellow area. The white area are things that are recommended. Some of them you don't have to have necessarily, uh, but the white area is for you to just create essentially and to test, okay? The yellow area is when you're ready to actually, like let's say share it or publish it, and you basically begin paying when you publish, okay? So if we look up at the top, this, some of these are gonna be kind of like duh, but you need InDesign. Okay, I mean, that's that's dumb, but you need InDesign CS5 or later. So you can have CS5, CS5.5, or CS6 to do this. You also need to get the right panels. You need to get the right tools, and you need to have the latest version of the DPS tools. You, you should anyway, in most cases. Now, I've got right here, if you have CS5 or CS5.5, if you have CS5, I know that you will not see those panels that I mentioned, the folio overlays and the folio builder panel in InDesign. So you gotta go download them, okay, for CS5 and CS5.5 to get the latest updates. In CS6, what I suggest you do, let me get out of here. It's just a PDF you can open if you want. In, if you have InDesign CS6, what you can do is you can come up under help and go to updates. If you click on that, it'll take you out and say, oh, let's see if you're updated or not. And usually it will show you if there are DPS updates or not. You can then update them through the Adobe Application Manager and be good to go. It'll install these little, uh, updated panels for you. Now, the panels I'm talking about, right up here, let me do this. I'm gonna go show the panel. So I'll go to Digital Publishing Workspace, just to show you, you don't have to do this. You want the Folio Overlays panel and you want the Folio Builder panel. If you're in CS5 or CS55, come under Window and somewhere in here, you should see Folio Builder or Folio Overlays. It may be under Extensions or something like that, but take a look for them, okay? All right, let me go back over to that PDF. You also need to update them. So if I zoom in here, so what I would suggest you do, InDesign CS5 and CS55, go here, click on this link. You can open up this PDF, it's in the class files. It'll take you to a downloads page on Adobe's website. You can always just type in the URL. On the right over here, it's kind of odd, but you'll see over here on the right over here, DPS desktop tools for InDesign, Folio Builder for InDesign CS5, you want to just get these. So if you see anything for CS55, you want to get them. Folio Producer, Folio Builder, Folio Builder, Folio Producer for CS5. Just pick your platform, download them. It'll take you to the process of installing them or just updating them and it'll replace what you have. And there we go. We almost always want to be up to date on the programs that we're using on because there's they add fixes like bug fixes. They also add some you know cool new features and things like that. So we got to make sure we have those panels available and the tools available. Now, as soon as you do install those as well, those tools, what you'll also get is you'll get something called the Adobe Content Viewer. This is a, a little app that, well, application that installs on your hard drive and it allows you to preview and kind of fake uh, an iPad <laughs> or a device, if you will, it's just for a device preview. So you can go right from InDesign to your hard drive and just say, hey, let me look at it and see what it looks like. It doesn't give you all the, you know, crazy cool slide this and that finger, et cetera. But you know, it does a decent job of giving you a quick preview. So that'll get installed as well. And it'll update if necessary. So you can see right here, these are the updates for you. There's also a PDF that you can download right here called Digital Publishing Suite Trial Guide Final. Um, if I click on this, take a look at it. It's kind of interesting. It's for single edition and it just kind of steps you through the process of what you need to do. And this is, wow. I've, Actually, not really looked at this too too closely, but this pretty much is what I just did. Step one, InDesign. Step two, update. Step three, create your stuff. Use your things. Step four, preview, and so on and so forth. So it's just a quick overview of how it all works. Let me go back over to the PDF. So you don't have to have that if you don't want. The guide that you need, you need to have for single edition, for those of you that are Creative Cloud subscribers as well, you got to have this thing. If I click on this link right here, and you're gonna see 50 ways to get this along the pro in, the, in the steps here. This is a PDF that steps you to, through the entire process of creating the app itself. So it's really important once we get towards the process of creating the app to have this PDF, okay? So you might as well get it right now. You can just download it to your hard drive if you want to. Click save. 
Okay. Uh, I would suggest you have an iPad. Get an iPad. It can be a one, a two, or three. For testing an iPad mini, it doesn't matter. Um, at least have an iPad to test on because I already said that we can go from InDesign and we can test on this little fake content viewer thing that's sort of like an iPad or a device, but you're not going to be able to test everything in there. So it's important that you have an iPad if you can get one, even temporarily just to test it. And if you have an iPad version one or two versus a version three or a mini, you're going to see a difference between the retina display and the other. In the intermediate DPS class, we cover more of that. For now, we'll just say, have an iPad you can test with. If you have an iPad, what you want to do is you then want to install Adobe Content Viewer on it to do testing. Here's what I'm talking about. All right, if you click on this link, you can see it. It takes you to the uh, I, Adobe Content Viewer iTunes Preview. This is on my hard drive, so it's not really going to do me much good right now. But what you need to do is you need to connect your iPad to your machine or however you do it. Or just go to the App Store, okay? So go to the App Store. I would suggest, you can see right here, on your iPad. And then do a search for Adobe Content Viewer, and you can install it for free. you got to have this thing to test. What I mean by got to have is as soon as you install that thing, let me show you what it looks like. There it is right there. They shortened the name just so it wouldn't get cut off. But you, you install that. If you open this thing up, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to preview right from InDesign all the different apps you're working on. These are all the different apps I've been working on. So I can go right from InDesign, connect my iPad to my machine, and just load it in here. And as soon as it loads it up, you can then start viewing it. So you need Adobe Content Viewer installed on the iPad to be able to do this, OK? And there's going to be updates to it. So I suggest keeping it up to date if you, if you can. All right, let me go back to PDF. Now, these are things that we're going to discuss later on, but I figured I'd mention it. You got to have a free Adobe ID to be able to at least share the files with people, to be able to somebody else to look at it. So you might as well go sign in for one if you don't have one already. Um, when you're ready to actually publish, to, to literally lay down the money and create the app, you got to be an Apple developer. This is something that they don't tell you up front. Now, what does that mean? It means if I go to Apple, Apple developer, you got to pay 99 bucks for a, a year to be able to create apps for the App Store the Apple App Store, okay? Now, this also requires, let me go back. So once you do that, you're going to download this program or this thing called Xcode after you sign up and you pay your money as an Apple developer. And Xcode is a little application that's used to create the app. It's kind of, don't worry about it, you guys. It's kind of behind the scenes, okay? But you got to have that installed on your machine. Here's a big one. If you want to publish the app and sell it, you got to be a Creative Cloud subscriber or purchase single edition on the Adobe website or have a professional or enterprise level you know, uh, subscription. Here's another big one. You can create the folio content. I mean, you can do, create all your designs and stuff on Mac and Windows. You can create them. You can share them with people. You can kind of test and do things. But when you are ready to create the actual app, you must create it on a Mac, something that is, is uh, supported. The reason why is because it uses this thing called Xcode, which I believe is only on Mac. I don't know. Anyway, you got to have a Mac. Okay, I'll leave it at that. These are the things that if you are ready to, to build and do, you got to have. If you, if you just want to go in and design and kind of try this thing out, you at least got to do like the first couple here. You got to have InDesign and you got to have the updated uh, panels and you got to have the panels, period. The rest of this, you can wait until you test or, or you know, share it with people or publish it. Now, lastly, I just want to suggest this. This is something that could be very useful going forward. If you have that iPad I was talking about to be able to test, and you go to the App Store, okay, go to the App Store, and if you, I just tried to click on it with my mouse. Are you kidding me? I'm going to go tap on it. <laughs> and you do a search for, and let me just make sure what it is. I keep forgetting the name of this. We're trying to get what's called DPS Tips. you got to have this app. It was made by a couple people at Adobe or several people at Adobe, and it's really useful. So go to the App Store. I'll tap on it and do a search. And I, once again, I'm trying to click on it with my mouse. Wow. Go do a search for, it doesn't even have to be uppercase, DPS Tips. Hopefully this will get it to us. DPS Tips, do a search. And there it is right there. You want to install this app right there. It's really awesome. The reason why I'm saying this, 
when we click on open is because it's going to allow you to learn a lot more about how to work with DPS. It gives you all sorts of great information. Let me take you out to the main page here. It'll give you how to work with uh, setting up your files, um, give you what's new. It'll say, okay, here's some basics of working with Anytime you see the word overlay, that means cool stuff. That's sort of the uh, interactive content. So you have overlay basics, interactive content, advanced overlays, advanced interactive content, effects, really cool effects, and then talking about single edition. So you just go in and you can tap on one of these. Let's say single edition. I tap on that. And it'll take you in and you can start working and just looking and seeing how things work. And it takes you through the process of how it all works, talks to you about it, system requirements, you can even use some of the features here. So they, they built it so that it actually works. And there's the process of how you work with it. There's a single edition workflow. So that's the last thing I was going to mention as far as, you know, something that you should have. Uh, the DPS Tips app is a great thing to have. And then download a bunch of different apps you can find. You're going to find them from all over the place, like Wired Magazine. This Process Journal is a pretty cool one. There's a lot of them. There's an Adobe and DPS one you can download. Go to the App Store and search for Adobe and DPS. This thing is awesome. I'm going to click on it. You're going to be able to see some of the stuff that you're going to be able to, to do with DPS. Anyway, there we go. That's working with DPS, at least getting set up, getting started, and getting your, your, your uh, stuff going here. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to start creating our InDesign files and talk about how we set up the files, how we set up the folders, and all the different things we need to have to get it to work.